What's up guys, Mike Lewis here, and welcome to the Mike Lewis Podcast. If you guys want to keep up with me on social media, you can follow me on Instagram at Mike Lewis Official, and you can follow me on Twitter at Mike Lou 52 It's where most of my updates come. If you're enjoying my content, give me a like and a subscribe, and without further ado, let's just dive right into this episode. All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another episode. And if you know who's joining me today, and if you guys want your MTV, then that's exactly who I have on with me today. Emily, how are we doing? I am doing so well. How are you? I'm doing fine. I'm glad that I could finally get you on here after this little cat and mouse that we've been playing for a while. So it's glad to have you here. (laughs) Yeah, definitely. And thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate it. For sure. How has um, everything been with you, though, this year? Everything is okay? or? Yeah, I feel like things are good. I'm in a great place. I kind of held off on doing this interview because I was going through some stuff, needed to um, take some me time, but it's really great to be back. Uh, I was in Cancun for All Stars 2 as an alternate. That was so much fun um, with Jemmy and Brandon and Father Cyrus. Uh, <laughs> and... You know, it's been really great, too, to see Johnny thriving and doing her thing. So it's been a good year, I think, for a lot of people from the show. Maybe, like, the year before sucked, but, yeah, I don't know. I feel like we're on to 2022. I'm with you on that. 2021 is definitely a little bit of a rough patch, but 2022 has picked things up a little bit. But um, that was interesting to hear about the Cancun experience with you because I actually thought about that as well. It had to have been a little surreal to go back there after like that long of a layoff you know you do your first original show there and then to just kind of go back and I know you had quite a few of your originals with you there so how was that going back there um it was so interesting because the me hotel had shut down so it's not there anymore Mm. so that was a little bit bizarre and like you look at it I was 21 when I filmed that and I 30, I was turning 34. That was my birthday when I was there. Um, so it kind of sucked not having to be like not being with my cast and knowing they were right up the street or like the hotel across from me. I was like, Jasmine, run, like just run. And I'll see you in a minute. But security's a little tight now. Um, I wouldn't call it bittersweet. It was humid as fuck, so it was humid sweet. But <laughs> it was interesting. It wasn't the same vibe. It felt very different. But it was nice being there. I just wish that I was with my cast members. Like, it was interesting. I don't know. I was definitely kind of butt hurt at first. I got over it because my girl, Jemmy, <laughs> came and saved the day. <laughs> well, she came to save my day, too, in the last episode, too. And I think um, that might be a, a good segue into our first topic. Since, <laughs> I mean, <laughs> you got the Internet ablaze a little bit yesterday. And um, believe it or not, you even logged back into your Twitter account after what felt like about seven years. Um, yeah, so everybody was kind of like wondering, you know, because we had this little uh, yeah mayonnaise right there. You could see that <laughs> co- coincided with, with what we're about to talk about. You actually um, came to bat a little bit for uh, Jemmy over a little bit of a spat that was going on on Twitter yesterday. And I think um, the question on a lot of people's minds is going to be like, what maybe prompted you to come to her defense? I'll be honest with you. Um, So Jemmy and I have had like our good days and our bad days, but something that really bothers me is the way that men speak to her and about her and attack her looks or like, what does smelling like two and a half to do with anything she said on your last podcast? Nothing. She didn't say anything that was disrespectful. She said everything that we all feel, I think. Um, And Zach, once again, just takes like a low blow and nobody's ever really coming to Jemmy's defense because maybe they feel like she doesn't need it and she doesn't need it. But it set me off. It was kind of like, don't talk about her like that. And also Knight wouldn't like that at all, the way he spoke about her. So it pissed me off. But I kept things light, like light mayo, in the sense of if he wanted to go down that road with food metaphors, we could talk about how bland and boring he is. And really, I feel like he always needs somebody there to either antagonize or have as his partner. He's always dating somebody or antagonizing someone. He's always got like 
the minimal to say, like, you smell like tuna. Like, are you 25 years old? When I read that, I literally was like, is this a 35 year old father? Or is this like the 25 year old Zach that was always bitching about something? I really felt like I was going back 10 years. So it was bizarre. That was my dog. (laughs) (laughs) No, I'm with you on that. It kind of does feel like Jemmy is always the one that kind of comes others defenses but when it's her that's like in the direct line of fire she doesn't get that same kind of support and um you coming to her defense i know a lot of people probably were happy to see that because otherwise it wouldn't have been shared as much as it did did you expect that when you sent that thing out or were you just kind of like all right let me just fire away and see what happens no actually i just found out not to make it morbid, I had just found out my friend, the CEO of Student City, had passed away from her long battle with cancer. And I was just kind of like scrolling through and I was like, fuck Zach. I was like, he's still doing this. And so I just wrote what I wrote. I did not think, like, my account is on private. Like, I was like, what is happening right now? Um, I would never want to intentionally like hurt somebody. That's why I think it was more like fun and games with that. But like, realistically, like you don't say that somebody smells like tuna, salmon, whatever have you like tilapia, (laughs) tilapia. (laughs) They don't don't know what they don't know. Let's keep it that way, you know, Mm -hmm. but I don't know. I feel She kept it real on your podcast. She didn't do anything wrong. Zach is always going for low blows. And maybe he needs to be read for Phil and shut the fuck up for once. So that's how I felt about it. And Jemmy is a good person. I just felt, I don't know. There was like this fire in me that came out and I felt like night approved. Night approved, you know. Yeah, well, we know how you feel now, but this is how I feel. I was, I'm just kind of curious. Where did the mayonnaise line? Was this something that you always I, okay, so, use, or just so people know, my friend's behind me right now, and I called her last night. And I was like, I'm having anxiety. I went in on this kid. It's really like expanding. I haven't been on Twitter in years, so the comments really sent me. I feel like the people responding to it were way funnier than anything I could write. Um. <laughs> But I, like, was laying there, and, like, I honestly don't know where all of that came from, but I was thinking about what Zach reminds me of, and I was like, he reminds me of fucking mayonnaise. Like, nobody wants it on their own. Like, maybe a cheeseburger, like, you have it on here, or a sandwich. But nobody's like, I want to have a bowl of mayonnaise. Sounds delicious. Like, he, kind of what we said earlier, right? Just bland, boring good with something else but not on his own get fucked zach that's how i feel about it <laughs> well God. i think i said in some that up yesterday so it's nothing new yeah mm. we we i think uh <laughs> that, that that pretty much answers that topic for uh those that were curious and um you know i kind of want to actually bring it back since we were kind of just talking about the cancun spectrum of things we know you just went out there um as an alternate <laughs> And uh, you and I actually spoke about this ourselves. We were um, thinking with the whole Cancun setting and then, you know, the amount of cast members from original real world Cancun that were there. We were um, coming up with our own theories as to what we felt was like the goal here. And I thought that they were planning originally for a battle of the seasons type of thing with maybe a small hint of maybe we won't get a real world homecoming ever in Cancun. So this is the closest thing we can get by putting it back in Cancun with three to four cast members there. That was my theory. I don't think you're wrong about that. Um, But I actually, I never know what they're doing. I feel like themes change. Like they called me. So it started in what? Like late July. They called me a I'm not going to say her name, but one of the people called me and or texted me and was like, I hope this is still your number. I was at work, 8 p.m. I got that 818 number. And they were like, are you interested in doing it? I hope this is still you. It's been a long time. And I kind of got to talking with people that had had the phone call come through. Um, you really never know. They really switch themes up sometimes, like last minute. But I think you're actually probably on to something. 
because I know Marie was called. I know maybe a couple of people from Brooklyn were called, but I think if people drop, then they call in other people and kind of switch things around that could have been the format, but isn't the format, if that makes sense. I thought it was going to be the duel. I've been praying the duel. Nobody else wants the duel. I want the duel. I think that's amazing. Well, I you guys it. heard it first. Emily Fitzpatrick wants the duel. So I want to the duel. Well, send me. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> who, who are you? Who are you calling out if you're in a duel? Who would I take down? It depends on who they give me. Well, Camilla. Know. Camilla's not there anymore, so you have to choose somebody else. She would win. I'm not going to choose her. Um, she's crazy. <laughs> Yeah, I'm just like picturing in my head. I was like, Laurel, no, I would just be like hugging on to her leg and be like, don't destroy me. Uh, I went on to the duel. Who would I choose? Zach. I would just kick him in the shin and take his ass down. Oh, Pass God. Him. Big baby. <laughs> <laughs> That's who I would take down. Little Mayo. <laughs> yeah. What did, what did you think about the... um? real world homecoming aspect of what I said. Do you feel like that is something that they want at heart or you think that they've kind of already put in their mind? Like, eh, I don't know if this is the route to go through. Um, I think homecoming is amazing. Um, first of all, I would like that paycheck. Thank you so much. And second of all, I think revisiting these relationships, like I did watch a little bit of it and it was interesting because I think it was with Beth, right? Like rewatching it, somebody yeah. got very upset about that whole situation. But it's so strange how, like back then, it was like what 1990, I want to say. 93, I believe. 93. Yeah. But like to go back there, revisit those emotions and feelings, and then we're in such a different time and place. Even though the kids still dress like it's 1993, I guess that's like the cool thing right now. Yeah. But <laughs> cut them hip, but um. I thought it was very interesting because real world is so different than the challenge. Like it really is about the dynamics and then you're connected with these people that are not from any part of like people like you really wouldn't probably connect with. And then there's all those intricacies that like really do pull you together. And I think they should choose those solid seasons like Key West, Austin, LA, um, Boston, Cancun, duh. But, um, even I think Sydney, even though they did that 30 minute format, so you didn't really get deep there, but New Orleans, both of those New Orleans were amazing. I loved New Orleans, the first one. Um, I loved Melissa. I think she was on New Orleans, right? Well, that, that's actually the next one. So, and then Chicago was really good too with Anissa. Remember that bitch walking around naked? She hasn't changed. <laughs> But um, those were great seasons, and I think they should totally visit those. Miami was amazing. Um, but to get those people back, even Paris would be awesome. Ace, Mallory, like Leah, Chris, CT, as people call him. Uh, who am I? Zach, right? Or no, he was Key West. Was there a Zach on Paris? I think we're getting their Zachs mixed up tonight. Uh, ones with a K, I think. <laughs> Okay, that makes a little more sense. Clear things up know. a little bit. I don't know. I'm getting old and senile. I'm not 21 anymore. <laughs> well, <laughs> happens. Yeah, I mean, we were just talking. You just mentioned about things like, you know, happening in the past and then times changing, of course, and things being seen in a different light. I feel like with your season, there's a lot of things that, like, you know, obviously would not fly today. And then by bringing those topics back up is a little on the touchier of the spectrum in terms of subjects. You know, I know with like a lot of the um, Joey situation with Aia was one that is kind of a little touchy to bring up today. So I don't know from like an insurance standpoint, how well that would go down. I feel like they should revisit that actually, because I think to teach people. Yeah, for sure. But I'm going to say this to you. If I could go back in time and change anything, I probably wouldn't, to be quite honest with you. Um, I think everything happened the way it was supposed to happen. 
I stood up for her. I felt like, and if she felt like she didn't have my support or other people's support during that, I don't know what else to tell her. Production actually intervened. They called up that phone and were waiting for somebody to answer it because she was cutting. Um, I don't think it was right that Joey hung that glass around the house. I don't think that should have ever happened. It brought awareness, though, to the situation. And she was going through a lot. Like, she was going through a lot of dark stuff then. And I don't know what else she could have wanted from all of us, though, because we were all going through things. This was like a new experience. Like we're 21, 22 years old. Um, I didn't know much about cutting. I just knew that like I was worried about her and from what was told to me. And also Joey was just always the ultimate antagonist. So it was like, you can't take it too seriously. It's kind of where my brain was at. Rewatching it now as a 34 year old woman, obviously shitty but production did help her production did step in and they offered her therapy she i think has a different experience and that's for her to speak on i can't speak about it but i can speak on is that we are all 21 22 years old going through this life-changing experience being on tv i gave what i could give to her in that moment and i feel horrible if it affected her throughout the years but i only gave her like what I could at that moment in time and it's shitty but they should revisit it and I think her and Joey really do need to sit down and have that talk because I'm always caught in the middle and I hate it I'm over it (laughs) it always feels like that doesn't it (laughs) yeah well the thing is is like I actually have said my piece to Joey I think he's grown up a lot he's a father for saw him you remember Joey Mm -hmm. here Yeah, you should tell this story. But anyways, we were at the Topsfield Fair. I was on the carousel with her and her son, my friend Chelsea over here. And all of a sudden, I look out into the crowd, and I see Joey. And I'm like, hi! (laughs) Waving at him from, like, a pony. And he's looking at me like, why are you alone on a carousel at the Topsfield Fair right now? And Chelsea's pointing, going, no, she's with us, like her and her son. Mm -hmm. But um, I got to meet his daughter and I got to take like videos of them going outside. But like Joey was also going through shit. We all were like, I don't know. It was such a weird time. That was a weird time because you could still get away with shit. It was still like the old school real world vibe, but going into a new school, if that makes sense. Well, I think a a large part in that is that, like, social media wasn't yet, like, a huge thing, but I'm sure, you know, MySpace was uh, still creeping its head around a little bit, but, you know. What did Jemmy say about MySpace? She was like, yeah, my nosy ass was on there. She was a MySpace warrior, from what she said. So, my friend Stacy actually was, like, MySpace queen. She was, like, one of those people people faked all the time. That's a whole other story for a different day. But, um... That would be a funny documentary, actually. But I will say this. I was the first person to have MTV. Emily MTV. Thank you so much. I was the first one to have that Twitter. Trending. Um, But Twitter was my jam. And I remember sneaking on the computer and being like, all right, if we go on Twitter and, like, do this URL for this, we can still get the website up and, like, lurk. And Johnny and I would be like, hee, hee, hee. And then you would get, like, internet connection disconnected and a phone call from producers being like, girls, you're caught. Like, we're watching your moves. <laughs> but um, just different times. So weird. And social media, yes. I think it's so – I liked what Jemmy said on the show when I watched it today about um, social media and, like, how if they did the season again, like, did a new real world. You want to get those people that are going through shit that don't really use social media. They're not trying to brand themselves. Like, this isn't The Bachelor or Bachelor in Paradise. You really get that authenticity from people. And I feel like Cancun, besides maybe CJ and Aya, got, like, authentic. Mm-hmm. We did go deep with Aya, but, like, internet winner. We kind of all judged her by the cover, and it got deep with her. But, um... Those storylines don't exist anymore. Like, they had to go and do different twists and plots because people weren't that interesting. They had to throw things at them for them right. to do it because they were all trying to produce themselves. Leave it to the producers. They have a whole storyboard. You don't even know what you're, like, dealing with, you know? 
And um, I miss that about reality television. I miss that about real world. I miss that about even the challenge. Like that's why all stars is so important and fun. But then even that now, like why was Kayla and Jordan and Naya on all star? You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, there. You're not little, there. Yet. Little, little oversaturated feel to it, you know? And then they were using my line about the elders. And I'm like, you can't say that because I'm old. So I can call them the elders. So people were talking about it. I guess like that actually happens. I don't know much about the season. I haven't like shaken Johnny upside down to like know what happened. I'm kind of like, don't tell me because I'll spill the tea. But um, yeah, I heard it was weird. And then they were sending everybody home and calling them old and elderly. And I was like, you just defeated the whole fucking purpose of this show. Like, stay on the other original challenge then. Like, it just kind of took away that, I don't know, what they were going for. That <laughs> so so would you agree then um, with the kind of thought process that Jamie and I had about the current direction in which um, the casting is as far as, like, the main challenge goes? I want to know who the fuck is casting this shit because they should hire me and Jamie. We would build the best cast. We would definitely be on it. But we would build, like, seriously, the best cast. It would be, like, cutthroat and free agents. Like, fun. People that are good-looking, fun, catty, petty, smart, whatever have you. I'm so sick of these. I don't even watch the show anymore. I thought Josh and Fessy were security guards. I was like, why are they, like, agonizing CT? No, I'm not even joking. I was like, who are these people? Um, why are you using people from Ireland and the UK? Like, who is Polly? Nobody watches that fucking show in the States because the States are so self-consumed anyways. Like, we only teach two languages. Every other country is learning all five, six, seven of them. So, like, why are we using them when you have a whole cassette tape wall of all these people that you brought into the show that people are invested in around this series it's insulting it's weird and who is doing that i would love to know because none of us really get to know about the casting process they've kept that top secret for so many years i feel like there's like a list and it's a short list and it's like a requirement it's like let me check off 50 people that have been on the real world just to say that we've made the calls but not actually use them but just to knock out the requirement I wrote the list, actually. I have it here. It says Anissa, Cara Maria, um, Jarrell, and I think Bananas and CT. And then are, you, are, you, are you on that list? <laughs> what number are you? Oh, I'm 134. Oh, shit. I mean, I'm... That's the episode I'm on, right? Then. <laughs> I remember. No, um, you know, when I was younger, I think... I didn't really care about competing. I was like, I am healthy. I have a paycheck that I have at home anyways. And I do these shows for fun. Now I would go back and I would really be like, I'm going to take your ass down. It would be more political, but I would definitely go in there and try to fuck somebody up to be quite honest with you. Um, I just feel like I was so young and I didn't really look at it like that. Whereas I was really confused by people being so competitive. I was like, this is weird to me and how mean people get about it and how they talk about each other. And I was like, I could say so much and I didn't say everything. And I said a lot. Is it, isn't it kind of weird? It's isn't so it? weird thinking back now. Cause think about it when you were on cutthroat, like people weren't starting to take it like seriously, but it was still at heart just like a personality based show. And if you flip the show on now and just to the casual eye, right? If you tell them like, here's Cutthroat, here's like the current show, I swear to God they would think it's an entirely different TV show. I liked like when they had to do like when you're rubbing your butt on an ice cube and everybody has to melt it. Like I like the fun stuff, the stupid stuff. Like, I love when TJ loses his mind laughing. Marie always sends him. He either gets really frustrated with her or he, like, <laughs> gets a kick out of it. And, like, I love when people drop into the water. Like, they're there and then they're not. <laughs> so, 
I miss that aspect of it. Now I just feel like it's so hardcore all the time. And like, why are there Olympians on the challenge? Like go on CBS where you belong because we can't be there. So you should stay there. Oh my Lord. Like I saw so many fans hearts break. I don't know if you saw the news or not, but they actually on Paramount, there's going to be a separate challenge where just exclusively to CBS people. And it's like, Oh, it, big brother. Like, hello. It's, cra- it's crazy because it's like, it's not like MTV's getting an MTV Big Brother or an MTV and Survivor. It's just CBS rating the MTV network and just taking their they show. They can't come on our show and we can't do theirs. Like, I tried out for The Bachelor. They told me I could not be on the show because I did The Real World. And I was like, well, you should have caught me first, one. Two, why not? seems so ridiculous to me like that hand in hand so I would love to just be a fly on the wall and know who's casting all of this stuff and how it goes about and we have that one solid list but um even Brandon Nelson how they used him as an alternate I'm like he's probably one of the best competitors and he always has Brandon Nelson, like, the fact that they didn't use him for All-Stars 2, but he was there. Like, I've seen that kid hang over the tallest building in Uruguay. It made me want to puke, but he was just doing, like, Peter Pan moves. And then we've got Leroy that they call every single time, who's, by the way, amazing. I love him. But, like, doesn't want to do that stuff. You know what I mean? And then, so, like, let's do a fair exchange of people. Like, let's rebuild the cast. Let's have people coming in and out instead of, I'm sorry. Watching Cara Marie all the time is a buzzkill. That's why I stopped watching the show. Honestly, I think she's a buzzkill. Yeah, I did hear that somewhere, too. You guys are both from Boston, though. So, like, I was she's curious. She's not from Boston. She's from Methuen, and I'm from Gloucester. Oh, okay. Well, that, that Chelsea, what's in... the difference between Methuen and Gloucester? Neither are in Boston. Neither are in Boston. She is but... from where Joey's from, actually. And that accent she does is not real, because I remember when she worked at the place, I knew her before the show, too. I'll never forget when she came for me on Twitter and she was like, you're just trying to be relevant. And I was like, well, I was on the show and they didn't use you for a full season because you're not that interesting. Your paintings are, but you're not. So shut the fuck up. Oh, wow. Why why do you feel like that started between you two? Because she's just annoying. Like, I feel like anybody would co-sign that. Like, Cara Maria whines about everything. She's annoying. Like, if you watch Kenny Maria... He sums her up real good, and that's my favorite thing Kenny's ever done. I'm Kenny Maria. I hate everybody. I love my horses. Like, she just complains about a lot of things, and she should just feel blessed to have what she has. I think a lot of people would co-sign with me being in a house with her for too long. Well, that would be a rival pairing I think I would like to see. But. Ew. I, all right, so this is one of my things. Just because I talk shit about somebody doesn't mean I want to be their rival, nor would I accept it. Um, I wouldn't want to be on the same team as her. Just like when I was on, well, the alternate for Invasion, I think it was. Kayla got mad at me because I talked some shit to her, but like everybody was talking shit about her in a group chat. So I just said what everybody was saying. And she was like, you, you want to be my partner so bad. And she kind of pulled the car Maria, like relevancy. And I was like, you were bobbing for dick in the dirt. And I got paid more than you just to be an alternate. This is a real life tweet. And she didn't know what to do with it. But my thing is, is like, just because I talk shit about somebody doesn't mean like I'm thirsty or desperate. Maybe they just need to have that said about them to understand, like, you're not everything. I feel like in these people with these huge egos, especially it's like the younger generation. Like, I don't want to be your partner. Like I told you, I like the duel. That would be my favorite thing in the entire world. And a lot of people don't want the duel. I feel like that's a misconception with you, too. I feel like every time you voice your opinion or you chime in on something, everybody immediately assumes, like, oh, she's just looking for relevancy to get back on the show. 
the thing is, is like I was on a real world season. I was picked over so many other people and like I have a story to tell and I had my story to tell. And so for these people to say that I'm not relevant, I am relevant because I'm a human. It doesn't matter if you're on the show or not. Um, I would never want Kayla or Maria or like when Jemmy was like, I like people that are like athletic. I want to be their partner. Honestly, I would like to be Leah's partner. I feel like that would be fun for me. Because we, I think, actually would kill it because I'm more into the politics of it all. And um, I don't want somebody that people don't like. And even though people pretend to like these people, they don't like them behind their back. And I don't feel like I'm desperate to be on the show because I was already on the show. They picked me over all these fresh meat people that talk shit. You were just a cassette in BMP's, like, back room. And they pulled you off the shelf. I've been on the shelf and I remain on the shelf and they take me off all the time. I've got 12 episodes to prove it. So I don't feel like I need to like stay relevant. I am relevant. Yeah. Did you get recruited for your real world or like, did you want to be on TV? So I was drunk. It was 2008. It was a July night. (laughs) I remember this because my friend dared me to do it. I wrote, I hate long walks on the beach, but I like getting fucked up. I sent a bunch of pictures of me on Cinco de Mayo. Um, I was moving home from college. I ended up working at Hooters, and I opened the store, and it was September 22nd that MTV came. They read my email. They sent me the VIP pass to cut the line. I never went. I got a phone call the week later. I was like, why are you calling me? Boston people are so interesting. Massachusetts is interesting who didn't show up that day. Um, I missed every single freaking flight. I didn't go to New York for like that initial group meeting. And somehow, some way I made it onto the show. They flew me out to LA for my final interview. I wore a white shirt. They told me not to wear white. (laughs) Because it obviously doesn't look good on the green screen. Um, I missed that connecting flight I was in LA for two hours and got back on a red eye and went to work the next day I honestly don't know how I made a show my story is very different than everybody else's I was the worst it was cat and mouse kind of like you and I what an analogy to use you know (laughs) I actually asked that casting director her name was Jess I go, why did you pick me? I, like, was the worst. Like, I didn't make any flight. I didn't show up. I didn't answer your emails. I go, was it because I was hard to get? And she was like, no, Emily, it was because you were nice. If you weren't nice and cute, I would have told your ass to get, like, fucked. I was like, that, okay. (laughs) Okay, Listen, I think think it's a pattern, and I think it's, like, the ones (laughs) that don't take the process seriously are the ones that get on the show, because then it's, like... I could well, care not... less. I really, truly yeah. care less. I thought it was a joke, kind of. And then when they told me I was going on and they told me it was Cancun, I was like, oh. And he goes, you don't sound very excited. And I was like, I was hoping it was in Nashville. <laughs> Would you still go to Nashville if you got the choice, if you were to go Yes. Back? I don't know why they haven't done a season there unless it's just like venues won't let them film. Well, you see, D.C. apparently is uh, garnering more attention. But that's neither here nor there. Yeah, DC. That was a season. To that was a... <laughs> yeah, Not I mean, some of the people on it, but that was a season to forget for sure. I feel I feel like it happens. It goes like you guys, and then like there's just like a gap, and then it's like New Orleans and Vegas. I don't know. It's weird. It is weird. I feel like it's kind of like what's it called? Like the bear scene bears, that whole theory though, where like <laughs> it's like a timeline. I don't know. I'm not getting weird right now, but I am. I don't get it. I forget what like the word is. It's not a timeline where something doesn't exist and we just pretend it never happened. Oh, like, I understand that. Yeah, well, I do that all the time. Definitely <laughs> splice this. I'm trying to think of like how to <laughs> explain it. <laughs> Whatever it is, let's just pretend DC never happened. Yeah. <laughs> Emily Strom happened, but DC didn't happen. No, yeah, we'll we'll go well. with that. <laughs> <laughs> Did you enjoy like your real world experience like better than like maybe your time on the challenges? Like, do you feel like that was maybe something that catered more to uh, who you were? 
Absolutely. I felt like for me, the challenges are whatever. I don't mind showing up and doing something that I might suck at because it's an experience for me. But like some of these people are like diehards for money doesn't motivate me. Like passion motivates me. Something that I really want motivates me or like, I don't know how to explain it. But anyways, for me, the challenge is everybody is so focused on the money that they're missing the point that there's like this huge experience happening and for me real world was just so much fun like you're in this beautiful house you're in a different location and that's like everything the challenge brings too and then you're with these dynamic personalities and you're learning from them and like for me I've never felt like I was better than anybody I felt like it was like equal ground when I was on my real world season and then you show up to the challenge and it can get nasty which is fine But, um, I don't know, like Cancun was so much fun and production makes it fun too. Like that was like, I think what was missing for me when we went back to Cancun is like, it wasn't the same production team. It wasn't the people that kind of like helped us grow into these 20 something year olds. And it was weird being there without them. That was the weirdest part of Cancun going back recently to answer your question about the bittersweet aspect. Oh, wow. So it's like that same magic, like, just like, wasn't quite there. The teams we had, like those people grew with us. They're with you every single day and every minute. And like, they become like mom, dad, the one that doesn't like you, the one that does like you. And then there's like the people on sound and if they switch it up, you're kind of watching this and they're going through that journey with you. And, um, I think that's what was missing the most for me. Yeah, for sure. And you and I did talk about this a little bit ourselves. We talked about kind of like the um, kind of the edit that you got like on the challenge too. kind of like stood out a little like a sore thumb a little bit Um, for free agents. Free agents was the most glaring. But I mean, you could speak. But anyways, (laughs) Um, I would say I want to say this and I don't think I've been able to say this on a podcast before. That was my bunk bed. LaToya and Jemmy co-sign anybody in that room. That was not Dustin's bed. Thank you, production. You fucked up. Uh, but like reading that, I was like, why would I be sitting in Dustin's bunk bed? I was like, first of all, he came to me. Second of all, no, it wasn't his bed. Thank you for that, bro. Production. Um, I will say I felt like on Real World Cancun, every edit was fair, fair game. I mean, that was our story. And I had a producer say to me about the people that felt like they were unfairly edited. Well, wasn't that what happened? Is that not the story? Even if like it's clipped together, was that not what happened? And I was actually like, you're right. Um, And on Free Agents, whatever I don't really care about the edit anymore I feel like I just show up and if they want to do with it what they want I'm not mad at the producers um but yeah I don't know free agents I felt like first of all that elimination was so stupid like John A and I John A had to have been 110 pounds and I was 120 at the time and you want two small girls to punch through drywall it was a dumb Johnny summed it up. He was like, this is the dumbest, worst elimination I've ever seen in my entire life. Like, this sucks. But, like, then you see Dustin and Frank punching through that drywall, like, hardcore. I just remember one of the producers trying to show us how to do it. And I was like, if you have to show us how to do it, why is it even an elimination? I don't know. What did we talk about with free agents, too? Like, just his creepy smile. Yeah, no, I was, I was, I was kind of, I was kind of wondering with the Dustin thing, like, what, did you guys, like, have a pass going into that thing, like, or was it just spur of the moment? So, Dustin and I knew each other because I met him when I was doing, um, Student Cities. I broke up with this kid. Student City gave me, like, $300, um, in the panhandle to go and just do the spring break for seniors, and he was there, and so, like, I was basically, like, the manager. It was night which is another funny story, Knight, Jemmy, and Dustin. And I had been there in Panama City with Jemmy and Knight probably like four months prior when I met this kid. Knight said to me, he goes, you're an idiot. I cannot believe you're moving down to the panhandle for this guy. 
you guys aren't going to work out and I'm going to see you in a couple months and you're going to be like, nay, why did I date him? But it was him, <laughs> Jemmy and Dustin. And so like Dustin and I had like a quick little fling, just like a smooch here and there. But so when people were saying like all the weird stuff with Jess, it really wasn't a love triangle in my eyes. It was more like Jess taking his watch off and being like, you're my boyfriend after three days. And everybody was annoyed by it. And I don't know really to this day why Nani said what she said. But she she told me that she said something not nice about me. And we let it go. But when I watched that, I was actually pretty disappointed. It hurt my feelings a lot. Because I've been there for Nani. More than people know. That did kind of suck. I know a lot of people were rubbed the wrong way by that. Well, I was not very nice to Jess. But nobody was nice to Jess. I was probably one of the nicer ones to Jessica McCain. Really? Mm hmm. I would mm. totally say that. Everybody was mean to her for the most part. Like, I remember when she was competing, everybody wanted her to fall off that, like, log. And I was one of the ones being like, chill the fuck out. Dustin's not really worth arguing about. It was funny leaving with him. And I know that she did cry. Like, <laughs> what, 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 how the tables turn or the turntables. As I did write Emily call was it. here in his bottom bunk bed and she had to read it after he <laughs> left. But like Dustin and I like left. I stayed a couple of days later because my knuckles were all missing. And I was like, if you guys want a good interview, so when you're, like, eliminated from the show, at least in the past, on Free Agents, and this was similar with Cutthroat, you literally go from elimination. They give you 15 minutes to, like, brush your teeth, brush your hair, and then you go into the interview room, and then you're, like, sent to the hotel, and you go home. And I was missing half my knuckles, and then Dustin, who du he never shuts the fuck up either, talk, talk, talk. I had to sit in this bed listening to everybody talking shit and playing basketball, well, Dustin's in this room for five hours, his interview, and then they wanted me to go in at 6 a.m. after I competed. I was tired. I was spent. And I was like, no, you're keeping me for another few days. I was like, I'm absolutely not doing the interview right now. Who the fuck do you think you're dealing with? And so they did keep me, and they were like, thank you for speaking up for yourself. I was like, you wanted me at 6 a.m. tired, like looking like a train wreck, waiting up for Dustin's ass? I was like, absolutely not. So I stayed there probably, this is your guy, three days extra than I should have been. And Dustin went home the next day. So Jess, nothing happened. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> no reason to cry. <laughs> yeah, that was a pretty actually nuts season. I mean, you obviously were gone second elimination, but you were there for some pretty crazy moments still. Like, um, I know the Camilla and Nani fight you were there for. What was it like being uh, there for that? Can you give me the lowdown on that situation? Yeah, their friendship was so weird to me because they both showed up having a pass with bananas. Oh. I thought it was so bizarre. And then it was like both of them woke up, chose violence, and decided we're going to have this pack to antagonize Chris tonight. Chris paid for the entire bar bill. And then Camilla kept going in on him, going in on him. And what wasn't filmed is that she punched Nani in the van. So then it turns into this whole fight of like them chasing each other around. And Chris is like just throwing his hands up like I'm not even involved in this at this point. But um, I'm always going to have like Nani's back over Camilla's just to be real with you. And she antagonized a lot of people that night. And I feel like Camilla, while she's not a bad person, like I feel like she has not been held accountable a lot in her life. She's a great competitor. Um, I've really enjoyed some of the funny things like walking into the pool, throwing the chair and screaming, I hate you bananas. Probably wasn't funny for anybody there. But what do you do with that? I was like, I thought you were leaving for a minute. I was like, you bitch. I <laughs> <laughs> no, sorry. She just distracted me. Thank you. Um, but no, the naughty thing, like, in Camilla. I said it from day one. When I went against Camilla on Cutthroat, I said, she cheated. She held me down with two hands. See, like, TJ called her out about it. He said, I'm going to DQ you. And then it was kind of like, 
seeing her cheat on other seasons, which we've seen over and over again. I just don't know why they would continue to cast somebody that was obviously, like, also has a lot of weird mental shit going on. And I'm not discounting, like, I'm not trying to take away from that. But, like, I just remember being like, Camilla is fucked in the head. You guys need to stop casting her and, like, let her have some time away from the show. And then she ends up punching a producer and stealing a golf cart. And it's like, what will you do to the point of, like, driving? Like, I don't know how to explain it. I don't want to, like, have this come out on the podcast and be mean about it. Because I feel like her mental health was really jeopardized. And I think it... I don't want to be mean about Camilla. I've noticed a recurring pattern, it feels like, with, like, the females on the show. Like, they do, like, a repeated, like stretch of seasons and burn themselves out before it's too late you know like yeah. they don't give themselves a rest to kind of regenerate and yeah, then i feel it, like it builds and builds and builds until you don't die a hero you just live long enough to become a villain yes. and the I, villain just suffers the repercussions of the wrath of you know the fans i just remember you know. thinking you know what you're totally right about that and the way i should like vocalize it is this I felt like Camilla was burnt out. She lost somebody in her life. And then she was coming and competing on the show. The girls, the women on the show, get shit on way more than the men. And the men have... When you ask Jemmy about the moments like that ketchup ball thing, they think it's funny. It's not funny sometimes. Like, it's not funny. And it didn't make television for a reason. It was wrong. And I don't think production sometimes sticks up for the females or we don't stick up for the females. And that goes back into the Mayo thing um, of somebody thinking they can say something so stupid. And it, even though it's so stupid, it does affect people and it does cause a reaction and a domino effect. Um, and I think the women have never really been respected enough. I mean, think about what was it? The gauntlet with Big Easy. That's when it yeah. started change about how women were treated on the show because if you think about I don't know back when Emily and the trio like back in the day buffet for the challenge women were respected and then when Evan and Kenny and the Johnny situation happened it was like their fragile little egos couldn't handle strong women and then you've got these people also shitting on Big Easy who's passing out and then leaving him behind I loved when they lost I was so happy like, I went back and revisited that episode, and I cannot, I wrote easy after that, and I go, you know, we haven't always gone on along and, like, agreed on everything, but what they did to you was so fucked up, and I'm sorry you had to deal with that, because I would have gone in, into the bus with that guy and gone to the hospital with him. Fuck the money. Those people were, like, belittling him. The fact that CT stayed behind and kept motivating him, I was like, I'm so proud of you. And Evan trying to get the money and pretending like he cared at the end, I was pissed. I felt like that was probably one of the most disgusting things I've watched on television in my entire life. Did, did you ever notice that with yourself, like with the show? Like were you hesitant to kind of step back into like the spotlight in a way due to like the mental aspect of it? I mean, the show for me has never really affected my mental health. Um I think if anything, it boosted my confidence. There were times where I feel like I look at free agents, I guess, in that montage of the guys making fun of me when I really went out there, put myself up there, and I got to pick Chris first, and he didn't know what he was doing either. And to be thrown on a bicycle and being 120 pounds and having my shoulder dislocated. But like... They've never really picked on me to the point where I felt, like, really upset. The show's never really bothered me in that aspect. Um, um, nobody's affected me to the point from the show or on the show where I felt, like, super depressed because of them. I feel like depression is something we all deal with. And if anything, this has built me up rather than knocked me down. But I have other shit that went on in my life. Right. So I had to deal with. This, so the show kind of pales in comparison to some of the real issues that you've dealt with, I guess you could say. Yeah. And that's what I'm going to say. You know what? I went hard for Jemmy because she was so there for me in Cancun. 
like made my birthday so special. I came out of the worst abusive relationship. I'm lucky to be alive right now. And I've never really said that publicly. Like I'm very, very blessed to be alive right now. Um, and she's been through it too. Doesn't talk about it much. We had our own personal combo, but that's why I go hard for Jem because she goes hard for me behind closed doors. So Zach needs to shut the fuck up because it is abusive what he says about certain people. Um, and us women don't deserve that. And I'm sick of the men on the challenge. And I said this to Brandon, N- Brandon Nelson. I said to him, I'm getting like a little bit teary eyed. I said to him, how come I'm the only one sticking up for Jemmy? How come the dudes aren't stepping up and saying Zach enough? Because if Bananas is texting me and saying, yeah, Zach shouldn't have said that. Why aren't you saying that out loud? You should say it out loud. The guys should step up. They should say and stick up for these women because we carry them on the show. We bring something to the table. Everybody has a mother or sister. Like, enough's enough. Kenny and Evan aren't there anymore. I think maybe they have learned from it. But, like, maybe it's time for the guys to start treating the women equally because we are equals. And it's bullshit. Well, maybe this maybe this type of conversation podcast wise was needed during this exact time period due to the simple fact that I mean International Women's Day was what yesterday, I believe. Yeah. Yeah. So absolutely. I don't know, maybe, yeah. maybe the timing just aligned perfectly then. For sure. Uh, but um yeah. No, International Women's Day, absolutely. And you know what? That's funny that I called him a jar of mayo. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Poor Zach. Jeez. In that sense. I will say this. My opinions about Zach don't blend in with Jenna, but like I feel like he would be nothing without Jenna. She's the chicken salad to his mayo. How do you make chicken salad out of chicken shit? This is the real question. <laughs> Are we like flirting and everybody's watching it? It's weird. <laughs> Listen. That is up for interpretation, Miss <laughs> Semple. No, I love that I have. Can I show you right now? This has been on my <laughs> TV for like. Jesus Christ. <laughs> I came downstairs because it like paused on you and Jemmy, obviously, but it's like you like staring at Wes and him like looking like he's playing Donkey Kong or impressed by something on Netflix. He might have been playing Donkey Kong. That's actually a good point. I will say this. I've talked some shit about Wes. He's not a bad human being. I actually think he has, like, progressed in, like, way more than I've ever given him credit for. So I would give him, like, a little public apology and be like, sorry, Wes. You know, I do remember this one time, and I think this was a few (laughs) months ago, or maybe it was, like, a year ago. I don't know. I got my timelines mixed up. Not like it matters. Um... (laughs) You guys were commenting back and forth to each other on, like, some post, and then I I don't know if he was just, like, trolling or trying to shade you, or he legitimately didn't know, like, he was talking to you, but he was talking to you as if you were, like, a fan, and you were like, Wes, like, I've been on this show, like... Well, because here's the thing. I'll never forget when he came to New Haven, Connecticut... It wasn't his event. He came from, like, some other thing. I don't even remember, but he goes to Kenny and I. What did you invite me here to make fun of me? And I said yes. I shook my head, like, absolutely. We've been making fun of you the whole drive from Buffalo to here, like, that you came here. But um, Kenny was like, no, Wes, I wouldn't do that to you. (laughs) And then Wes was, like, my height and sizing me up and down and, like, that was so cocky. Yeah. And then he wrote on Twitter that I tried to give him BJ. And I was like, I'm not going to go down that road, but absolutely not. Like, absolutely freaking lutely not. And I'm also friends with Johanna. I wouldn't hook up with Wes or try to get with Wes. Thank you so much. But thanks for coming to the TED Talk and party, Wes, in New Haven, Connecticut. That's how I felt about it. So it was very strange that he wrote that I tried to blow him on Twitter. It was so weird to me. I was like, um, okay. And then when he was pretending he didn't know me, he knows exactly who I am. Melinda and I have talked about it. She's like, you need to like get over it with him and he needs to get over it with you. 
So so that so that thing with you, Kenny, and him when you guys were going to that place, that was after the uh, whole saga between uh, him, Kenny, and Johanna? Oh, yeah, that was after. That was oh, after Lord. Kenny carried up, up the hill, I'm pretty sure, right? Could have been. I mean, you know I'm better than sure me. <laughs> the fact that Wes goes, you guys invited me here to make fun of me. I said yes. Kenny was like, no, 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 no. I was like, yes, Kenny. <laughs> Absolutely, you did. But um, that's on Ken at that point. I actually miss Kenny on the show. And I feel like even though he was wrong with the Tanya stuff, he might, should be maybe a little forgiven. Because I think he's grown a lot. He's come so far. So did you get, like, a lot of opportunities post-show once you got off Cancun? So, <clears throat> I told you how my friend passed away. So, Jackie Lewis, that ran Student City, um, she started off really small. Like, it was like a spring break trip with her and her friends. And she expanded it into a three, $30 million company, actually, is what she sold it for. Oh, wow. uh, they invested, I think, probably $5 million to be on Real World. And it was, like, a long process for them to even get to that point but she was able to sell the company after that but she passed away um two days ago and johnny and i were very close with her and she provided so many like experiences and wisdom and so paula bananas like all the spring break stuff you see with these personalities she's the one who came up with it and it expanded into like this whole enterprise and like then pe other people were doing it as well. But yeah, it's very strange that you asked that because every opportunity I had probably after the show besides from MTV and BMP um, was from Jackie and Student City. That was a wild, fun summer. We did a whole tour of Canada. That was fun. Canada's fun. Oh, Canada was so much fun. Those fans are crazy. I was like, you guys watch the show? You're fans? I was like, why are you dragging me down like a staircase right now? What is happening? Am I Drake? Am I Rihanna? <laughs> Justin Bieber? Maybe. Selena Gersh? <laughs> Could be. <laughs> Alma? <laughs> I don't know about that one. What was Elmo's rock? Like when he gets mad at Sally for the rock. You know that's like what's happening right now. There's a whole controversy about Elmo and Sally's rock. Rocco. 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 This is like real life news. This has been on TMZ. It's Elmo versus Rocco. Um, did you try out for Real World ever? No, I have not. Never. What got you into the show is what I should be asking. You know, I always tell I always tell people this. It kind of just fell in my lap. It was me. You started watching Cancun. And you're like, I can't get enough of her. I, I started watching Emily Fitzpatrick on the Real World Cancun, and I couldn't get enough of her. So I was like, you know what? I think that's a perfect segue into starting a reality TV podcast. So yeah, let's just do yeah. that. And then I had to proceed by talking to 123 other people before I could finally get to talk to. <laughs> so here we are. Yeah, so, and I guess um, this is a good place to end it. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you so much for having me. I mean, oh, yeah. I think Leah was supposed to hop on tonight, but she was like, I'll give her the spotlight. She was just an alternate. Listen, everybody's got to get their spotlight once in a while, you know, so just this was, this was your calling card. You know, thank you so much. No, oh, for sure. That. I'll I'll let you know when this is out, and um, I'll obviously still text you if I'm allowed to. <laughs> Um, all right. Mike, thank you so much. I had so much oh, fun yeah. with you. For sure. Have, have a great night. You too. All right. Bye. -bye.